Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family Road, Road Trip, Trip, the Empty Nest Edition. Wow. What a camp spot this Oh my word. Another is... camp spot. We were just going by. We saw the tracks as we usually do and uh, we couldn't resist and we came in here. I'm going to mark this one as well. Man, if we had, uh, if we weren't moving south to meet up with the kids again, we would camp at all these places, but look at what I'm looking at. I love how quiet and remote it is though. Mm -hmm. So there's a trail all along this ridge here and there's camp spots throughout. So if you're ever in this area, don't miss this spot. Lando's having a blast chasing squirrels and just getting some exercise. Just a little bit further. We're doing it again. This trail is just amazing. You, you just can't stop and turn around. You gotta keep exploring. Linda, you want some water? Good boy. Today we are making our way into British Columbia and down to the small, scenic and secluded village of Atlan, BC. Alright, we made it uh, to Atlan. Um, we had some suggestions on YouTube saying if you're up that way again, don't miss the Atlan country. This whole area is just spectacular. Just gonna try to get a feel for it, and then we're gonna go find one of the many camp spots along this lake that uh, we saw on the way in into town.
the camps, but this is... Look at that. Unbelievable. <laughs> we're right on Atlin Lake here, and um, we're finding all kinds of beautiful camp spots, but this one is incredible. We're just going to get out and look around. The water in this lake is so clean, crystal clear and pure, you could probably drink right out of it, but we always, uh, regardless of the water source, we always filter it through our lifesaver uh, wa water filtration jerry can there but man crystal clear cold w drinking water it's in abundance here in bc i'm just going to use some of that water make up the coffee for the road and then we're going to get back to the alaska highway and carry on south to uh, uh, watson lake area and we've got a few places we have never been to that we want to check out like stewart bc where there's glaciers that you can get fairly close to, so that's where we're going next. We're taking you with us. That was an incredible spot. What so a nice beautiful. place. Hard to believe places like this exist. Just amazing. This is uh this whole Atlan area is um, just exceeded our expectations. It's beauty beyond belief. Wilderness, quiet, hardly anybody here, and uh, just beautiful camp spots everywhere you look. So there's only one road into Atlan, BC, which uh, for people to get there, you have to actually, from BC, you have to go into Yukon, come across the Alaska Highway, and then come down into this part of BC. The only other way would be to fly in by float plane or helicopter over the mountain. So it's very remote and um, kind of isolated which is what makes it so special down there. In uh, years and years ago when, during the gold rush uh, some gold was found in that area and that's kind of how, how the town got started and people that were going through Skagway and trying to get up to um, Dawson City realized there's gold a little bit closer and some of them just said hey I'm going that way and it was a much easier trek over to Atlan then going all the way up to Dawson City. And then when the gold ran out, it became a, a new gold rush of uh, tourism. And so people would come up on a train as far as they could to Skateway. And, and then they built a little uh, single track that would take people to the lake. And then there was big boats like we showed when we were down there that would take people across the lake. And so the town kind of thrived for a while on tourism. And they called it the Switzerland of, of BC, I think is what the nickname was, because of the snow-capped mountains. Almost all year there's snow-capped snow mountains around it. And, uh, and just the natural beauty. And people would come up here and be guaranteed to see bears and moose and all kinds of wildlife. And then in the Great Depression, 1930s, mid-1930s, tourism dropped off because uh, the depression was going on. And it only is now uh, recovering from that, I guess it it, uh, it kind of dropped off the map for a while. But now people, modern day adventurers, go all the way down the Atlan Road just to hang out there for a couple of days and it's well worth it. So you'll notice on our trip so far we've been doing uh, free camping, just finding spots and there's plenty of them and they're very remote and quiet and beautiful. But there's a lot of people that aren't comfortable doing that as we weren't in our first year or two of travel. And so for those who want campgrounds, there's plenty of campgrounds in Yukon. 
and in BC and in Northwest Territories. So you can get a you can pick up a booklet at a visitor center when you get to Yukon, and it'll show you where all the campgrounds are. You can pay online or pay when you get there. They're they're um, unserviced most of them, and wild and beautiful, and they're only about 20 bucks a night. So. Um, that definitely is an option for you if you're going with your family or, or you're, you're in a motorhome or you have a trailer and you don't want to get stuck in the wilds in the bush, those campgrounds are beautiful. So uh, that is a great option for anyone wanting to do the same trip we're doing. So with this um, the route we took up to Taktiaktak and back, it's an in and out route. And uh, you might think, well, you've seen all that land, you're going back over it, but it's unbelievable going back in the other direction. It looks, everything looks brand new. Not only that, but we're going through Teslin right now, uh, Yukon, a small village of Teslin, Yukon, right along the Teslin Lake for the last hour. It's a huge lake, it's spectacularly beautiful. When we came north, it was pouring rain, so we actually didn't see it. Um, and now we're getting, uh, on a beautiful sunny day, we're getting amazing views of the lake and the mountains around it. So it's, uh, never worry about retracing your steps coming back out on an in and out route. You get to see it uh, from a whole new perspective. Sweet. All right. We um, just pull onto the Stuart Cassier Highway. It's a two lane small road, but um, we're now in back in BC and just want to say Yukon you've blown our minds um, what a awesome place hey eh, Carol what do you think oh I loved it it's gonna take a, a few days to let it sink in I was already kind of missing it when we were getting close to the border but yeah the colors and the mountains and just everything about it definitely blew me away and I can't wait to get back there um, again and just explore it some more and do some hikes and just go even further and I didn't realize how far away it is mm -hmm. like it, it's far and I always thought like we kind of camped in remote places that was camping in remote places and that was really really special and now that we got a little taste of it I think we want to go even more <laughs> yeah with all so. the exploring we did in Yukon all it did was uh, reveal more and more places that we need to explore there so we'll definitely be back and hopefully with the kids in yes. the full rig That'd be very fun. But yeah, so here we are in beautiful BC. British Columbia has an unlimited amount of beauty and wilderness to offer as well. So we're excited about what we can show you guys. Good morning. We uh, had a beautiful camp just beside the same river, but just one, I don't know, probably 100 feet that way. But this morning we came in and drove a little further and you can camp right here on the shore of the river, which is just a beautiful spot. We're almost tempted to stay one more day. It's so beautiful, but uh, we have to keep moving south. But we've marked it and we'll come back here. But you've got a, a river with um, probably trout and for sure grayling in there so if you're into fly fishing you cannot find a better spot to camp right on the banks of this beautiful quiet river we're in northern bc just south of yukon and uh, it's a gorgeous remote place Okay, we just 
just uh, stopped in the tiny village of Dees Lake and we're now headed out to Telegraph Creek. Um, last time we were here with the kids we went about halfway down this road. We didn't go all the way. The weather got really bad so we turned around and came back but um, we're excited to complete the quest to get out to the tiny uh, town of Telegraph Creek at the end of this road and see what that's all about. But it's, I can assure you, beautiful scenery on the way out. We'll probably camp halfway back. But uh, if you're in Dees Lake, uh, just a little traveler note, there's no Wi-Fi for, for days here. And then you get into town and there's um, a little college there, a small building on the just off the main street. You'll find it. And you can get free Wi-Fi there. So we uh, got in there, did what we needed to do, tried to connect with the kids, but they've been off-grid themselves in Iceland and uh, now for two days so they must be having the time of their life way out there so we left them a message and they'll get it when they come back to civilization but yeah join us as we take the trek down the telegraph road to right to the end Uh, I'm just going to mark this for future reference, but it's a gorgeous little clearing just off the Telegraph Road and it has a spectacular view and in the background we can see Mount Adziso. Uh We couldn't see it last time we were here because of the clouds and the rain, but uh, it's a snow-capped mountain. I think it's a flat-topped volcano and we'll see it more as we get towards Telegraph Creek. Oh, Caroline's going to be excited to see this. Yeah. That was unbelievable. That we was so here. cool. <laughs> it's unbelievable. This little town perched on the side of a cliff at the end of that road. What a neat Look, place. I thought I've been to towns that are in the middle of nowhere though, yeah. but this is like on a whole nother level. It sure is. How cool. After the Glenora settlement, oh, okay. the Glenora gold rush oh. was down there, um, down the river. And now they, when the Yukon gold rush opened up, yeah. everybody from there left there oh. and went up there. That was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so just as we pulled into town, we met uh, a lady who was just explaining to us that basically the whole town, all five of them, 
are packing up not not just for the day but for the season so they're pretty much shutting down the cafe they closed the museum just as we arrived um, so we'll have to come back and get a tour of that someday but with, I, with the kids I definitely want to and apparently the fish run in, in July, July so July is the time to come and the experience second week it. of July and the local native people that have been fishing on this river forever will show you how to um, prepare the fish and dry them and all that kind of stuff and they do it just uh, 18 kilometers up the river is a little there's no town there anymore it's just called uh, Glenora there's really just a sign left but that was the site of a, a gold rush before the Klondike and apparently up to 10,000 people lived there at one point and just for about four years and then the Klondike gold mm. rush started and everybody packed up and left so some of these buildings were moved from Glenora here to Telegraph Creek, including that one which is a um, Hudson's Bay Company store from 100 years ago. So cool, and this town is so hard to get to. You've seen the road coming in here. We're gonna take it part way out and find a camp spot uh, for the night.
So I don't know if you guys can see Lando right there, but he has been stalking these little birdies that are in that tree probably the whole hour that we've been cooking. At least. And he's just sitting there, just in one spot the whole time, just totally... Happy. <laughs> yeah, happy, I guess it is. But yeah, he's in heaven at this camp spot, that's for sure. But it's so funny to just see him just sit there. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see, see you down, down the road. So there's a bunch of these little black flies or gnats, I'm not sure what they're called, but they don't seem to bite, but they're annoying to get in your nose and your mouth and your eyes. So Carol, who thinks of everything, brought these little mosquito nets with us. First time we've had to use them. And I think as, as soon as the sun goes down, these things will be gone. But uh, Carol looks... Let's see how Carol looks in her little get-up. <laughs> these work great. Yeah. You have kind of a whole suit. That's great. Yeah, and I even have little... Oh, hand. Oh, nice. So, you like, wear them. If it was like, say, mosquito-y, like, mm -hmm. um, then I could work the camera, cook, and not be eaten alive. There's I wish that there was something for Lando, though. Yeah, he's just kind of sort of bad. I don't know if you can see them buzzing around, but... This isn't bad. I thought it would bug me. <laughs> ah, pun intended. I know. Look, boy.